We are taking this entire box of 27 straight mid-ranges to a field to find out which one is the straightest. But what makes a straight mid-range so important? Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. Before we get started, a quick announcement. We are super excited that pre-orders are now open for our first run Six Sided Discs jerseys. You can choose from men's or women's fits, sizes from small to 3X, and they come in three different styles. Black Flux, Purple Shift, and White Shift. Pre-order yours at the link in the video description from now until Monday, May 22nd. Now, on to the video. Back in January of 2022, we drove down to Tennessee to shoot a video with Chris Dickerson to learn all about the buzz and how important it was to his game. But the importance of a straight mid-range does not end with Chris Dickerson. In fact, the Buzz is one of the best-selling discs in the history of disc golf. Amateurs and professionals alike rely on the Buzz for reliable, straight shots. When you watch In The Bag videos of professional players, they talk about these staples in their bag. So what flight numbers do you think you would use to build the staples within your bag? I think most people would agree that you start with a few specific slots in your bag, such as a 12 to 13 speed, overstable but workable distance driver, like a destroyer. You might also put in a seven to nine speed straight to stable fairway driver, like a T-Bird or an Undertaker. And of course, many people are gonna want that straight mid-range slot, such as the Buzz. And then of course, an overstable approach disc like your Zone, and then maybe a pair of putters. Now with just these five discs, players can manipulate the angle of release or switch to a forehand to fill in most of the gaps that we see here in the flight chart. But the question we have now is, why does a straight mid-range belong as one of these staples? Udisc's Release Point blog had a great piece on how and when to throw mid-ranges. Quote, because of their ability to glide and shape shots, mid-ranges are great for both shorter tee shots and longer up shots. One thing that makes mid-range discs so popular is how controllable they are. Udisc used 2017 Advanced Amateur Disc Golf World Champion AJ Carey as one of their sources on the topic, and he said, quote, Mids fill a purpose as the most controlled flights in my bag. He went on to say, I can throw them straight on Anheusers, rollers, hyzer flips, soft hyzers, and hard fades. You cannot leave out the mids. So mid ranges are extremely important. And many players would also agree that the hardest shot to throw in disc golf is a straight shot. So if mid-ranges are the most controllable disc, it would stand to reason that they would be the easiest disc to use to throw the straightest shot. But which mid-ranges are actually straight? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. We're taking nearly 30 straight mid-range discs to a field to test them against each other and find out which one flies the straightest for us. As we go, we're gonna categorize those mid-ranges as either straight, overstable, or understable and we'll leave a little bit of room on the edge for any outliers we might find. Now, for this test, we are not interested in distance, but simply how straight the disc will fly. Straight to us could be defined as a literal straight line or minimal turn to minimal fade, finishing with a straight flight. Throwing for us today, we have Caleb, who's currently rated 918. You saw him previously in our Thunderbird video. And also throwing with us today is Team Lone Star's Daniel. He's currently rated 869. Without further ado, let's get to the discs. First up for us is the MVP Reactor. The Reactor is available in Eclipse, Fission, or Neutron Plastic. Ours is a max weight Neutron Reactor, and it was pretty overstable. I've thrown some of these reactors in the past and they were straighter than this one, but for our comparison, we're gonna say it flew pretty true to its flight numbers and a bit overstable. Next, we have the Prodigy M4. The M4 is a very popular mid-range among Prodigy throwers, and for us was one of the most reliably understable mid-ranges we threw, much more so than the negative one one as the numbers might suggest. The M4 we used was in their glow plastic, so perhaps some of their other premium plastics might be a bit more overstable. The Dynamic Discs Truth. The Truth caught me completely by surprise, and I can't really say why because I'm not sure what I was expecting. I don't know that I've thrown it, I don't know that I've seen people throw it, but needless to say, the Truth was surprisingly 
overstable. Daniel's shot was a little bit of an early release, but it just carried and carried left. While Caleb's shot was also a tiny bit early out of the hand, all this disc wanted to do was go left. Completely unexpectedly, the truth is going in the overstable column. Next up, the Disc Mania Origin, Midnight Prowl. The Origin is a disc that we've thrown on camera many times, as recently as our Thought Space Athletics Mana video and as far back as our Buzz video with Chris Dickerson. And just as we expected, it is much more understable than the negative 1-1 flight numbers, consistently turning over and holding that turn until it reaches the ground. The Midnight Prowl Origin, as well as the Stock Origin, are very much an understable mid-range. We were curious if there might be much difference between the Midnight Prowl and the Midnight Prowl 2, so we're going to test that as well. The Midnight Prowl 2 is in meta plastic, and it's safe to say there is a noticeable difference. The Midnight Prowl 2 has plenty of initial turn, but does actually work its way back to flat and eventually fade out, giving you a straight flight if you have the airspace for it to fly. So for the purposes of our testing, we're going to say the Midnight Prowl 2 is straight. Next up, we move on to the Texas Ranger from Lone Star. This is an extra interesting one because Daniel just joined Team Lone Star recently. He's been bagging buzzes for as long as he can remember for that straight mid-range slot, and the Texas Ranger is essentially fighting for that spot in his bag because he's only able to throw about 10% of the discs in his bag as non-Lone Star discs. Based on the initial throws with it, it looks like the Texas Ranger is close enough to a buzz that it may be able to take that slot and work away into Daniel's bag. Caleb's throw with the Texas Ranger was a little bit low, but also very straight. Overall, we'd say the Texas Ranger is a safe bet for a straight mid-range. Back to Discmania now with the C-Line MD3, the first of two versions of the MD3 that we're going to be testing. On the first throw here, Daniel let this one come out a bit high, but it gets very overstable and pushes way left. While for Caleb, a lower, harder shot pushed a little bit straighter for much longer before a very reliable fade. Overall, the C-Line MD3 is just too overstable to go in the straight column. Our second version of the MD3 is the Chroma Iron Samurai 4. The Chroma Iron Samurai 4 is typically a lot flatter than your average C-Line or stock C-Line MD3, and it also held much straighter for much longer than the C-Line MD3, but it still had a pretty reliable, dependable fade at the end. It is definitely closer to a straight mid-range, but still probably has just a bit more fade than you might want for a straight mid-range, if and when Discmania come out with the MD3 in their new S-Line plastic, we expect that to be a much, much straighter mid-range. Discmania fans, though, don't despair. Stick around to the end to find a disc that you probably already throw for a great straight mid-range slot. Next, though, let's move on to Castaplast. And as somebody pointed out in the comments, I know I'm probably pronouncing these Swedish discs incorrectly, and I apologize in advance. Now, as we've seen from previous videos, the SVI is much more understable than its negative one zero numbers might suggest. So we're going to put that straight in the understable column. Hot on its heels, though, we have the Castaplast Gott or Jota, which I do think is the per correct pronunciation. Comment below a link to some great Swedish pronunciation, if you don't mind. Now, the Yota or Goat isn't that far off on the flight numbers at just a 0-1, uh, comparing to the Svi at negative 1-0, and they could not have flown more differently. On both throws, the uh, Yota or Goat was super overstable for us. It definitely does not earn a spot in the straight column. Uh, maybe that's down to the glow plastic. I don't know. I've seen it fly a lot straighter in K1, but it's safe to say the one that we tested was very overstable. Moving on now to the Warship from Westside Discs. The Warship at 5601 sounds like the perfect straight mid-range. Lots of glide, minimal fade, and frankly, it flew pretty nice. Now, both of these shots were a bit low and released a little early, but regardless, you can see just how straight the warship is holding on both flights. 
we were really impressed. And once you get used to the shape and feel of the warship, which feels a lot domier than most mid ranges, this could easily be a great straight mid range. Innova's first entry for us is the Star Wombat 3. The Wombat 3 shares the exact same flight numbers with the Sphi, and it also shares the exact same flight path. I've seen people throw the Wombat 3 straight, and I think you need a lot of touch and not too much power and maybe a bit of hyzer, but for us on every single throw, the Wombat was very reliably understable. And so it goes firmly into the understable column. Now, for the last couple of years, I've been hearing from Innova throwers at our pop-up shops. See, we don't have a dealer account with Innova. They only give those out to brick and mortar stores or I guess really humongous online retailers. Nevertheless, we don't usually have a great selection of Innova at our shop. And so Innova throwers are usually telling me about how much they love the Rock and Rock 3 and that they wish we had some instead of all the other mid ranges we have in stock. Well, we happen to have a Rock and a Rock 3 right now to test and compare and see if they really are straight. But the catch is that they both have a 0-3 turn and fade, which doesn't sound straight at all. And many Innova throwers have told me over the years that that's because you want to get one in DX plastic or spend some time beating that disc in to fly straighter. So let's see if they know what they're talking about. First up is the DX Rock. And I can see why Innova fans like it. It does hold straight, and I have no doubt that you could easily beat in a DX rock to fly very straight, but we're not testing beat in discs. These are brand new, and a brand new rock is overstable. Simple as that. Next up, the Tour Series DX Rock 3. Now the Rock 3, thrown flat and low, did hold very straight. But as soon as we gave it room to fly, it showed us that that three fade is very true indeed. Straight into the overstable column as well. Now, Innova throwers might also be saying, what about the Mako 3? Unfortunately, we didn't have any Mako 3s available to test, so you'll have to wait until we make version two of this video. Moving from Innova now to two discs manufactured by Innova, the Infinite Discs Metal Flake Glow Sea Line Chariot and the Infinite Eye Blend Anubis. So out of these two, I firmly expected the Metal Flake Glow Plastic to be pretty overstable. And I also expected the Eye Blend Anubis to be pretty understable as this has usually been true for any of the discs that we have in those plastics. And the Chariot blew away my expectations by being so, so, so understable. Every single throw, the Chariot got up, turned, and never looked back. The exact opposite to what we were expecting. The Anubis, on the other hand, was surprisingly stable late in its flight. And while our shots with it were a little bit nose up, it certainly had more stability than I expected. So the Anubis just about earns a spot in our straight column, but the Chariot, no way. Understable. Back to Prodigy again for the M Model US. At 4.5, negative 1.1, one, one, the M Model US sounds like the perfect straight mid-range. Caleb got a really nice turn from it on a sort of hyzer flip type shot with a decent bit of power. Not bad. And Daniel pulled it a little bit to the right, but it flew really, really straight even with that slight grip lock. We're confident putting the M Model US in the straight column. Next up, the Latitude 64 Opto Compass. I've heard a lot of people talk about how straight and versatile the compass can be. So I can only assume that they were throwing a different compass than the one we threw today. Because this compass was beefy on every single throw. It was overstable and then some. It was probably in the top two or three most overstable mid-ranges we threw. 
So I'm not sure if it's just the opto plastic on the one that we threw, but if you're looking for a compass, maybe try out some other plastic blends. I don't know. Next, we have a disc that you're probably not familiar with. This is the Divergent Discs Capre or Caper. The first one we're gonna test is in Max Life Plastic. They're premium plastic. And even though it's their premium plastic, it's only $13 at retail. Now, Divergent Discs markets their discs to beginners, and they have very beginner-friendly flight numbers on the majority of their discs. So naturally, we expected this to be pretty understable. And boy, was it. Easily one of the most understable discs that we threw on the day. Now, we also have the Capre in an even less expensive, more beginner-friendly plastic called Max Grip. Now, if you thought the Max Life Capre was understable, just wait until you see the Max Grip Capre. Capre to the right. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You did it again. <laughs> That's literally almost identical. The Max Grip Capre is ridiculous. It should really have a glide rating of 10, a turn rating of negative six. It just did not want to stop flying. And this absurd amount of turn just kept carrying and carrying and carrying to the right on every single throw. It honestly doesn't even have a place on our chart. The Max Grip Capre is the most understable negative 1-1 mid-range disc that we have ever thrown. Period. How do we follow that then? <laughs> well, how about with the most overstable mid-range that we tested today? The Latitude 64 Royal Grand Trust. Now the Trust is a newer mid-range from Latitude 64's Royal line, and at first glance you probably don't think it should be a straight mid-range at 0-2, but lots of pros have been talking about throwing it as a reliable straight mid-range. And I think it's safe to say that it may only be straight for big time power throwers. At 5502, it flew more like a 5503 or 5504 for Daniel and Caleb. Reliably overstable, nothing more. The Streamline Echo, Echo, Echo. With flight numbers of 55, negative 1.51, we were hoping for a nice, consistent straight flight. And the Echo definitely wasn't super understable or overstable, which I think it's fair to say makes it a straight disc, but it does get some turn and some fade. So we're happy putting it in the straight column. I would say a worthy inclusion as a straight disc and worth giving a try if you like the feel of streamlined plastics. Moving on now to the Thought Space Athletics Pathfinder. The Pathfinder we're testing today is an ethereal plastic, but it is available in a variety of plastics from Thought Space that may vary in stability. This is another disc that I've heard a lot of people really like for straight flights, and I've even tested one myself and found it to be pretty straight. But this ethereal Pathfinder was not very straight. Not for Caleb and Daniel, at least. Both throws we recorded were surprisingly overstable. We didn't notice anything different about the wind or the release, so maybe we just got an overstable one. But the Pathfinder probably fits in with the Chariot as one of the furthest from what we expected in that it was reliably overstable. The Latitude 64 Gold Orbit Claymore. Now, most Orbit versions of Latitude 64 discs that I've thrown have been more overstable than their counterparts. And I think it's fair to say that that's pretty true of the Orbit Claymore. However, the Claymore still holds on to a little bit of understability. Given the airspace, the Claymore still gets a decent amount of turn before a decent fade, finishing with a straight flight.
Another great contender from Latitude 64, the Gold Ice Fuse. Now the Gold Ice Fuse held nice and straight, even if thrown a little bit high by Daniel here. And while Caleb got a bit of an early release on it, it still had extremely straight. Fuse, straight, great disc. Now let's move on to the top three straightest mid-ranges we tested all day. The Buzz from Discraft. There would probably have been a riot if we didn't include the Buzz in our list, and I'm thankful that it did in fact fly straight for us in this video, but not without maybe a little asterisk. Before we show you the straight Buzz shot, I wanna talk about the Z Buzz, brand new, off the shelf. You see, if you've thrown brand new Z plastic before, you probably know what I'm gonna say here in that it is surprisingly much more overstable than you might expect. However, if you're willing to try out some other plastics or take the time to beat it in, this is what you can get from a buzz. A nice gentle turn and a nice gentle fade. This flight right here is what makes the buzz one of the best selling discs of all time. This one that we're throwing is an ESP Flex Buzz from Ledgestone last year. And it is definitely performing as one of the straightest discs we tested. Next is the Discmania MD1, AKA Simon Lazat Metal Flake Sea Line Mindbender. The Mindbender was a revelation when it first released last year. We sold out of our Mindbenders so quickly that I had to reserve a couple to test for myself and I have to say I fell in love with them immediately. We filmed these shots of the Mindbender about a week before the rest of these discs and it is fair to say it is outrageously straight. Probably the straightest disc I've ever personally thrown. And even with my elbow injury now, I'm still able to get a really nice straight flight, which makes it all the more depressing for me to tell you that after this shot, I somehow lost my Mindbender. So if you by chance have a mind bender that you're looking to get rid of for not completely insane collector prices online, feel free to leave a comment below the video. And finally, for our straightest mid-range disc of the lot, the Latitude 64 Opto Claymore. I'm just gonna let the flight path of the Opto Claymore speak for itself. Ooh, that was very straight. What was that? Claymore? So, congratulations to the Buzz, the Mindbender, and the Claymore for being the straightest discs that we tested. Keep in mind that the straightest mid range for you may vary. There are so many things that influence the flight of a disc, not just the weather conditions, but the person throwing it, the plastic, the temperature at the factory when it was manufactured. Get out there and test some mid-ranges and find out which ones fly the straightest for you. Are you a diehard Buzz fan? Or have you branched out to throw other straight mid-ranges from across the disc golf spectrum? Comment below your favorite straight mid-range disc and tell us what you love most about it. Remember, flight numbers don't matter. They only tell us the manufacturer's intentions and not how they will actually fly. You can find most of these mid-ranges we tested today at SixSidedDiscs.com or at the link in the video description. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. If you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible.